Just give a minute to clear the waiting room. As a reminder, as you are entering, please mute yourself unless you are appearing or testifying before the board. Make sure we are recording. Great. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. Thank you for joining us today. I'm chair of the board and today I'm joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order it appears on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with knowledge of the alleged incident. I will then swear in all parties. After that, the police report will be read into the record and the licensee or the representative will have the opportunity to make a brief statement, followed by questions by the chairwoman and the commissioners. Again, all testimony will be limited only to individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident. And we will be taking item number 11 out of order and beginning with that. So now calling item number 11, uh, Old Trafford Inc. doing business as Paradise, located at 967 Commonwealth Ave, date of the incident, October 18th, 2021, Indecent Assault and Battery, Patron on Patron in Violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 22. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Green. Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. I hope I have someone here. I didn't realize we would be called first. Um, Joe, uh, Declan, oh, there he is, Bill Guerra. We can go ahead. Okay. Thank you. William Guerra. Perfect. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Hi, good morning, Sergeant. Uh, Mark Kerbin, area D14, Austin Brighton. Sergeant Kerbin. Thank you. And are there any other individuals uh, with personal knowledge of the incident who would like to testify today? S okay. S Sergeant Salucci present or, or uh, Detective McCarthy? No. Okay. Uh, could all parties please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Sergeant Pervin, <laughs> please proceed with the police report. Sure. Usually I um, read the police report, but since this is sexual assault, it's classified, so I'm just going to give you guys the cliff notes, if that's okay. Um, so we came in about 10.43 on Tuesday, 10.18.2021, officers from Area D14, which covers the Austin Brighton area, on the uh, first half tour of duty, which is 4 to 11.45, responded to the establishment for, um, it came into the sexual assault in progress and ended up being in an indecent in assault and battery. So what happened is a um, mother and her juvenile son, I don't know the exact age, it's in the report, maybe 10, 11 years old, or, um, at the establishment on the second floor at watching a concert. I believe they were sitting down in a booth when the uh, subject came down, sat next to her and started groping her, touching her breasts. Um, that's when we all came, the subject was outside. We don't have to get into any of the details, but um, the subject was arrested on scene outside. Um, I just wanna add that the, the staff was more especially the man's was more the cooperative, very cooperative. They're the ones who call 911. They brought the victim and the son into the, their uh, private office, gave them water. They showed me where the licensed premises were, where I wrote them up. Um, so I have nothing bad to say about the staff at that time, at this time. Great. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, Attorney Quilty, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, thank you, Sergeant. I appreciate it. So do you, do you recall whether it was Mr. Garrett who was with us this morning who actually called 911? Um, I think the report has, first name, William? Yes. Yep. yep. Thank yep. you. Uh, thank you, sir. I have no further questions for the sergeant. Um, may I just ask uh, Mr. Garrett to uh, testify? Yes, sure. Um, so, so, Mr. Garrett, you've been sworn in. Just state your name for the record and your position at the establishment. Uh, William Guerra, general manager. Okay. And on the uh, evening in question, uh, did you, uh, was this uh, incident brought to your attention? Yes. 
And as a result of that, what did you do on the staff? What did you do? Uh, we called 911 immediately, um, as is our procedure, especially in a sexual assault case. And then, oh. um, and then we just, you know, <clears throat> did our best to uh, to comfort the victim and uh, get her to a safe place, and uh, you know, just ask her for information. As she, we did get a description of the um, suspects, and uh, were able to locate them as they were leaving the building. And you then, did you continue to observe those suspects outside yes. the building? Yes, they, they and, go ahead. Go ahead. No, they just, you, uh, they just sort of walked off to the side of the building. <clears throat> um, it's a very popular show and a lot of fans were hanging around wanting to catch a glimpse of the artist. We assumed they were doing the same. And um, so we fortunately did not really have to inter interact with them at that point. They just sort of waited there and we knew the police were on their way. So it worked out pretty and perfectly. In, and in fact, it, was it the BU police who arrived first? Correct. Yeah, they were there with that. Did you just a couple of minutes? Yeah. Did you point these individuals out to both the BU police and the Boston police? Yes, immediately. Okay. Thank you. And um, did you um, have any any further interaction with them, or did you simply then uh, allow the police to do their jobs? Yeah. Once yeah. once the police arrived, we we passed it off to them. We just spoke to the police to give our accounts, but we didn't interact with the uh, with the others at all. Thank you, Mr. Guerra. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, just in addition, I don't know whether Mr. Megan is with us this morning, but as a result of this incident, the staff circulated a photo of this individual because this particular group, a band was playing three nights in a row in the city. They circulated a photo to the establishment where they were performing the next night, which is the House of Blues. And as a result of that, the individual was uh, again, uh, observed in the line, trying to get in. They approached him, told him they would not allow him in based on what had happened the night before. And he was in a way, he had already been arrested the night before. So, but they, they took uh, extra precautions to make sure that he, did, he didn't get into the next night's event, if you will. Thank you. So Mr. Gare, the, the board may have some questions for you. Thank you, Chairman Thank you. Joyce. Yep, thank you. I do have a couple of questions. Um, how long was the show this night? Uh, this particular show was about 90 minutes. <clears throat> and was the suspect in attendance the entire 90 minutes? No, we, <clears throat> we were able to um, find the, uh, the couple entering the building on our videotape and it looked like they, they were there a little bit after, after the uh, event started, I believe. But they were there for it, it, probably at least an hour, 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 an hour of it at least. Did they um, were they served alcohol? I uh, I don't know that for sure. They did have wristbands. They were old enough to to drink, so I would assume so. Um, did you have an opportunity to check credit card receipts or anything to see how much the suspect may have consumed on site? I'm trying to get at whether or not this was a foreseeable incident. Right. <clears throat> no, we we did not. Okay. And this happened when the, the concert was letting out? Yeah, correct. The, light, the house lights were already up and the, and the people were beginning to file toward the exits. Can you describe to me the security you had on that evening? Um, <clears throat> we had, if, I, if I'm, my numbers are correct, we had about 24 security guards on, which is larger than our normal uh, sold out staffing. Uh, this is a very high profile show. They came with their own, they had advanced with us to put extra security on. They also brought their own security team, which I think was about four people. Um, so how, ma how many security would you normally have? We normally do about uh, between 18 to 22, depending on the threat level that we uh, discussed prior to the event. What kind of threat level was it this particular night? This one was actually not considered a high threat level show at all. It's um, they're they're a very you know they're not a hardcore band. They're not a hip hop band. They're they're a pop band. Their their audience is very young, um, uh, primarily female. But they did ask us in advance. They just said we you know we very they they're very cautious about their fans and they and the band itself. You know, very well known band. So that so they, we were asked in advance to beef up security for this one. Okay, so the suspect, it sounds like he was on a different floor than the victim. Yeah. And when the concert was letting out, he somehow got onto her floor and sat down next to her. Well, we don't know where he was 
uh, you know, prior to the end of the show. He may have been up in the balcony area the, the, the whole time. We don't know. It, it's, it's general admission, so it's, uh, you're allowed to go wherever you want. Can you describe the dispersal plan for something like this? How did, how did someone get onto another floor and sit next to a patron? Well, as I said, it's general admission and there's no, there's no seating. Um, I don't, the, the one strange thing about that account, because this is the first I've heard that he sat down with her, um, is that we, we don't really have booths in that area. There is a banquette seat up there against the wall. So that's, I assume that's where she must have been sitting. But again, it's not, it's not assigned seating. So, um, you know, even though it was, the event was ending, there's still a good number of people just starting to disperse. <clears throat> so he, you know, it's, it's certainly possible that he could have sat down next to her at that moment. So back to the dispersal plan and the security that night, can you just yeah. describe for the board, you know, what the plan was for that night when the lights so, go on? What yeah. do you do? So generally what we start doing at that point is we, we sort of sort of start with the upstairs areas <clears throat> and just sort of start guiding people in and announcing that the, you know, the show is over. If you have tabs open, please go settle your tabs. We don't get too firm with people leaving uh, because it was early. This is a pretty early show. Um, it was over by, I think, I don't know exactly what time, but I think it was around 1030, 1045. So um, we had plenty of time to get people out. So we don't, we don't try to be too firm yet, you know? Um, so we're just sort of encouraging people to go settle their tabs and move toward the front exit. Um, there are two different ways down from the balcony. So we'll just direct them to the two staircases that they can use to, to exit. Um, so, it, but it, at that point, that's basically what security was doing. And there was a good number, as I said, there were a lot of people up in the balcony. Um, so, you know, it, it's not, it, it, something like this could potentially happen out of sight and, you know, we wouldn't, we might not catch it right, right away. So this person's coming down from a higher floor and somehow got onto another floor. Like what, what would his reason be to be going no, on no. the floor? No, no, we were only, we only have the two floors. My assumption is that they were watching the show from that floor. Okay. okay. Yeah. We wouldn't have let when the show, when the lights come up, no one's allowed to go back up the stairs unless they okay. have a tab, unless they have a tab at a bar upstairs and that they need to close, then they are permitted to go back up to do that. Or okay. if they're with the artist and they're on their way to the green rooms. Okay. Madam Chair, just for the, just for the record, it's a, a roughly a 900 seat facility. There are only two levels, uh, the main, the main floor where the, where the stage is and a small balcony area above that, which includes the, mixing area for the, the band, if you will, and a couple of small banquet, kind of uh, as, as Bill described it, almost like a bench seating, but it's all, it's all standing room, the entire facility, and one can circulate pretty much wherever they want to go and walk around. We'd initially heard that the groping, if you will, happened as they were exiting, that he somehow, you know, was right next to them or something and, 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 and groped the woman. Um, but again, I mean, it's a fairly small uh, facility and with 24 security people on for that many people I, I and mean, I think they they had it covered pretty well but again I think this happened at the a moment when people were all moving around and we thought that, that that's when it happened that this guy grabbed her uh, and he was identified we found him on the video they identified that the guy followed him out you know helped the woman I think they did everything possible they could in the circumstances okay I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Nothing additional. Thank you. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Returning to the top of the agenda and calling item number one, the Pitcher's Mound, Inc., doing business as Diamond at Fenway, located at 72 Brookline Ave. Date of the incident, August 10th, 2021. Assault and battery, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, Mr. Green. Again, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee with me this morning is uh, Calm Leiden, who's the uh, Boston Red Sox Director of Security, and Derek Schwartz, who's uh, representative of Aramark, the concessionaire. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Sergeant Detective Donald Keenan out of D4. Thank you. And are there any other individuals uh, with knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify today? 
Okay, could you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Great. Sergeant Detective Keenan, please uh, proceed with the police report. Yes, sir. Uh, at about 10.08 p.m. on uh, August 10th, uh, 2021, Officer O'Rourke, while working a paid detail at Fenway Park, responded to a radio call for a fight in Grandstand 27. I responded along with multiple detail officers. Upon arrival, uh, Officer O'Rourke met with several Fenway security staff who had separated the three individuals involved. Officer O'Rourke spoke with Edward Bissonette, who was involved in the altercation. Bissonette stated that he had been involved in a fight with two other patrons at the game. Bissonette stated that he was punched in the head area multiple times during the altercation. Fenway medical staff evaluated Bissonette on scene. Uh, Bissonette declined any need for medical attention, assistance. Officer O'Rourke spoke with Sean McQueenie and Kaylee Quinlan. Quinlan stated that she initially told Bissonette to sit down as he was continuously heckling the baseball players and causing a scene. Quinlan stated that Bissonette turned around and flipped her baseball hat off her head. Quinlan explained that Bissonette proceeded to punch her with a closed fist to the left side of her face. Sean McQueenie informed the officers that he proceeded to defend his girlfriend and punched Bissonette several times during the fight. McQueenie also stated that he received multiple strikes from Bissonette. Officers observed scratches and bruises to both Quinlan and McQueenie. Both parties declined need for medical attention. All parties were escorted out of Fenway without further assistance. Uh, I retain a, a recording of the incident from a witness who showed the altercation. The officers observed on this video, Bissonette initially flipped Quinlan's hat off her head, followed quickly by a closed fist to her face. Officers observed a fight ensue with all three individuals striking each other multiple times. Officers observed the fight to be quickly separated by other patrons attending the game. Uh, all three individuals were summoned to Roxbury Court for assault and battery. That's, that's all I have. Thank you, Sergeant Detective. Uh, Attorney Quilty, would you like to address the alleged incident? Okay. Uh, thank you. May I just inquire of the detective? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, uh, detective, were you and Officer O'Rourke both on paid details the night in question? Yes. And the, the report indicates, does it not, that when you arrived at the site, Fenway Security were already on, on site dealing with this matter? Yes. And on the inspection notice, you... Um, you filed that or, or, or gave that inspection notice to um, the Red Sox. And on that, it suggests that the police were called by Fenway and Red Sox security, right? That's correct. And that the management cooperated with you? Yes. Um, thank you, sir. I have no further questions. Um, Mr. Lydon, were you, uh, I'm sorry, may I inquire, Mr. Lydon? Yes, you may. <laughs> Mr. Lydon, you've been sworn to state your name and your title for the record, please. Uh, Cullum Lydon, Director of Security for the Boston Red Sox. And were you uh, on duty on the night in question? I was. And uh, can you, uh, you've heard the report as it was indicated, were your staff uh, on, on site? Um, and how quickly do you, do you know they were on site when this incident was reported? Uh, they were on site in a, in a matter of minutes, if not seconds to help separate these people. They notify police right away. Police were right there right away to separate them and take them downstairs. And um, did, your, um, did your staff, as far as you're concerned, did your staff cooperate with the Boston Police Department? Absolutely. And then did you, you receive the actual notice of the incident yourself and sign for it? I did. And perhaps you can just describe um, how you staff uh, on, a, on a game night such as this it was an August August night, and you know how your staff is situated around the park. This was Section Twenty Seven in the grandstand. Just a brief description of how you place your security personnel. Now, for our security personnel, we hire for security about two hundred people for every game to put out there. We have about uh, thirty 
plus minus police officers for different games. They're always traveling inside the vomitories and along the concourse and on the top of the walkways to watch or anything like this. We also have a, a, a text tip line, which if somebody did notice somebody heckling the players, they're informed that they should text these tips so our security can get right down there right away and separate them. And there's all ushers too on uh, just about every walkway and every entrance uh, within a certain block to respond to these issues. Okay. So in your opinion, did your staff respond quickly and appropriately to this incident? As quick as they could, correct. And would you just describe, I know you have a, um, a uh, camera system um, and, and a main monitoring station in the park. Can you just describe that for uh, Chairwoman Joyce. Uh, we have a command center that's set up in the park for every game that utilizes maybe six people inside there that receive radio calls, tips, and they can connect with the police department right there to send people out to address these things, connect with security to send people out. There's hundreds of cameras. There must be 350 cameras all around the park, and there's a, operators inside of a camera center that are watching monitors to see if they can see anything like this pop up and respond to it right away and notify the police as needed. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Leiden. The board may have some questions for you. I don't have any questions. Thank you. None for me, thanks. I don't have anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Calling item number two, the Pitcher's Mound, Inc. doing business as Diamond at Fenway, located at 72 Brookline Ave. Date of the incident, October 18th, 2021. Persons under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34A, 34C, and 6464A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Again, uh, Mr. Green, Dennis Quilty, representing the licensee. The same witnesses call Mr. Leiden and Mr. Swartz, who were previously sworn. Great. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am. Thank you. And Detective Hernandez, you have not been sworn in yet today. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Uh, Detective, please proceed with the police report. Good morning. I'll be reading you. Uh, from a police report, which I wrote on a Monday, October 18, 2021, starring Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez, assigned to the BPD License Premise Unit, conducted license premise inspection of Fenway Park, located at 4 Jersey Street. Detectives were walking through the lower concourse level when they observed two young looking patrons, each holding a mixed alcoholic beverage. Detectives asked them to produce identification to confirm their ages. Both patrons immediately stated that they were under 21 years of age. The male patron later identified as William Chun, initially provided detectives with a fraudulent mass driver's license, which contained Mr. Chun's name, but displayed a date of birth that made it appear as though he was over 21 years of age. Detectives used a license verification provided Mr. Chun was indeed fraudulent. The fraudulent Massachusetts driver's license was confiscated by detectives. The female patron later identified as E. Rest, Rest of Populus, did not possess a license and did not provide detectives with any identification. Both individuals will be summoned into court for persons under 21 possession of alcohol. Mr. Chen will additionally be charged with possession of fraudulent identification and procuring alcohol for a person under 21 years of age. Detectives brought this to the attention of the person in charge, Mr. Colm Leiden. As a result of what detectives observed, charge Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 00. Persons under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise. It should be noted that both individual, both juveniles were transported to District 4 police station and released into the custody of their respective mothers. That is all. Thank you, Detective Attorney Quilty. Would you like to address? Yes, sir. Detective? If I may inquire, Detective Hernandez. Um, <clears throat> Detective, did the um, licensee cooperate with you? Yes, sir, fully. And um, just on the issue of, of the identification, the, the male individual had a mass license with his likeness on it, but you checked it and it ended up being a fraudulent. Correct. But it was mass, not out of state. Yes, sir. 
Okay, and it had it had his information, his photo, et cetera, on the yes, face sir. of it. Yes, sir. Um, the um, did they did they inform you whether or not you know they purchased these? Is it the allegation is in a, in possession? Yes, he he purchased the gentleman purchased the beverages. But we have no um, uh, no witness that observed that. He suggested to you that he did. Yeah, he, he told us he did. So you only observed him in possession. Obviously, that's the charge. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and again, the the staff and the, the Fenway Park security. Did you inform them right away, and did they observe to come back and 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 work with you? Yeah, they were extremely helpful. Thank you, sir. Um, I have no further questions. I would like to inquire of Mr. Uh, Leiden and Mr. Swartz, if I may. Um, and, and Madam Chair, members, you, you can imagine on a uh, sold out um, event at Fenway Park, you're talking about plus or minus 38 or 39,000 people. Uh, the um, staffing, as you heard earlier on the security side is roughly 200 plus Boston police details. Um, that's for every, every um, game, et cetera. There are additionally uh, Aramark, and Mr. Swartz is here, Aramark compliance personnel, uh, 18 of those individuals whose only job is to observe situations like this, roving the concourses, roving the seating areas with a specific eye towards younger looking persons in possession. Um, uh, they, Mr. Leiden and Mr. Swartz can tell you the numbers of checks, if you will, that they have made on people, uh, the number of people that they have um, stopped themselves, um, and all the steps that are taken by both Aramark and its team and the Red Sox and their team in terms of keeping an eye out for these circumstances. Um, they, they are extremely serious about this. They take their licensing rights very seriously and do, uh, I think, yeoman work, if you will, to observe what goes on within the park uh, via cameras, via eyesight, with the police details, with the Aramark team, et cetera, to uh, ensure that these things don't happen. Um, Mr. Leiden, can you, you've been sworn to state again your name for the record and your position. Colin Leiden, Director of Security for the Boston Red Sox. Okay. And were you, uh, were you at the park on the night in question? Yes, I was. Okay. And did you actually did you actually sign for this uh, inspection notice? I did. Okay. And do you um, can you tell the board what your uh, staff did in response to this and how you how you were notified and what your staff did in response? Uh, normally, our staff is prepared to watch for these things along with Aramark. You know, we have those security officers that we have go through team training, which is uh, total education and alcohol management. Uh, training and effective alcohol management. Um, we have that, we have a relationship with Hub, Hub Security that does all the alcohol compliance. They did approximately 16,000 checks in, um, on age ID and another 2,100 visual checks for these fake IDs that are coming from all different states with half of them, out of a thousand of them, half of them in Massachusetts. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of a thousand. Yeah, out of approximately a thousand IDs that came in, um, half of them would be from Massachusetts, which is 60% up from what it's been over different years now. They're getting better at fake IDs. And have you observed in the last few years a particular um, uh, issue or problem with fake identification? We have, and it got so good. It's um, that sometimes you have to question the people thoroughly to find out exactly like I had two kids myself and the IDs look great, but they both were carrying voter registration forms, which no one carries voter registration forms. And that's part of the package when you buy fake IDs that they'll give you a voter registration form to send with people as well. Wow, amazing. Um, and with regard to the uh, checking of individuals that your staff does, what steps do you take? Uh, we will put out uh, different, you know, it, when it does happen and we're getting big numbers, we put out, I won't call them strike teams, but I'll put out roving patrol that have 
that do the same thing that hub compliance, hub security does for compliance, and they work the different areas of the concourses and the biggest sections that we have to try to watch for people purchasing in line, coming out of lines, or walking through the concourse, or passing off <clears> to <throat> other individuals who will come out of the bathroom. We have to watch the bathrooms too, because they'll go in with two, and then a younger person will come out with one. And then I've been in touch with hub security for different measures of sort of surging at different times during the game to try to combat this. And if you put uh, those those uh, matters in, in play, if you will, for the upcoming season? Correct. And I, the, the board may have some questions of you and I would like to just hear from Mr. Swartz, if I may. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? So, Mr. Swartz, again, you've been sworn to state your name and your title for the record. And just, Madam Chair and, and uh, board members, Mr. Swartz will be before you as the new manager of record applicant. Um, he will be taking the place of Mr. Melissi, who left Aramark. So, in the near future, he will be on as the manager of record uh, before you. Thanks again, Mr. Swartz. Just state your name and your title, please. Yep. Derek Swartz, Vice President of Operations for Aramark here at Fenway Park. Okay. And it, does your company hire the um, alcohol compliance individuals? We do. Yes, we partner with Hub Security. And can you describe to the board what their responsibilities are and their role? Yeah, in a nutshell, they are are basically put out on the concourse to to manage our our alcohol program, making sure that uh, you know we're 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 serving responsibly from a, an employee standpoint as well as you know the guests that are within the uh, the concourse as well. And <clears throat> excuse me, what um, what training and background do these people have, and your and your serving staff have? So our serving staff uh, go through team training as well. Uh, every every uh, three years, they they get renewed. Uh, it's part of uh, our alcohol program. is part of our onboarding each year when our folks come back to work for the start of the season. So we review all uh, our alcohol policy itself. And uh, as well as uh, hub security. Okay. And um, and you heard Mr. Call, Mr. Leiden refer to the number the number of uh, checks and and uh, sightings made. Was that by your staff as well? Uh, I, I don't know the particulars, but uh, I, I can't say yes or no. Okay. You did you did hear him say that they've stopped the question sixteen thousand people in the course of that last year. I did hear that, yes. As far as the Aramark staff, I mean, again, we're, we're, we're IDing anybody under the uh, 40 years of age at the point of, point of sale. Um, so we do have a checks and balance there as when we're making the, uh, the transaction. Uh, thank you, sir. The uh, board may have some questions for you. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions. I know this is a um, violation for person um, under 21 in possession, but were you able to figure out who purchased the beer? N no, negative, ma'am. We think it was the kid using a fake ID. Okay. Um, Detective Hernandez, we're talking about a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old. Would you say they looked young? Yes, ma'am. Did he? Did the 16-year-old? That's what caught our. That's what cut our attention is how young they looked, especially the female. She was 16. A 2005 person, 16 years old with the beer. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Kern, Commissioner Saxon. Yeah, Hernandez, how, how good was the ID? I mean, I know that they're getting better, but. They are, if, if I can respond to that, the IDs are just amazing what they're coming up with these days. I've seen nothing like it. It's um, very, very, very professionally done. I, I would have to agree. I mean, I'd have to agree that they're pretty, they're pretty good IDs. <clears throat> but we use we use our system, and you know, we can tell right away they're not they're not good. So, I mean, you be, can I just ask a question? You 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 run it through equipment? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have a license verification program that we have uh, on our phones, and it takes a matter of like three seconds to confirm the uh, 
the validity of the ID. It's not perfect, but it. Yeah. Very good job, Klaus. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Commissioner Karn. Any questions? Um, did the Detective Hernandez? Did the young man tell you when he purchased it? No, no so we didn't get that far, sir. Okay. Uh, and just getting to the question of, you know, the ID and the reliance. I mean. Mr. Chun was 17 on the day, correct? Um, he was a juvenile, so yes. I mean, I can get you a date of birth if you want. I believe he was 17. So yeah. um, just based on your observations, I mean, was he was he an older looking 17 year old? Was he a, someone who looked basically exactly 17 year old or someone who looked younger than 17 years old? I mean, I think the young lady was the one who draw, draw, drew our attention and then we looked at him and then we could tell that he was probably- you know, She more gave it away. Further away from her. She more gave it away. Yes, sir. And so with, with that in mind, how long did you have an opportunity to observe the two of them like in the concourse, should, was it enough time where someone in the staff should have confronted them? Did they pass other members of our mark security or did you notice anything to, like, no one's confronted them, we're gonna confront them? Did, did you have that experience or? We were standing and they were coming at us and we, we just, you know, as. know where they were from. All right, Detective, you're frozen. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know if you can hear me now, but we were at the bottom. And so we don't know where they can know. Maybe if he cuts off his video, we can hear this. Yeah, Detective, could you try turning off your video? There we go. Can you try again now to answer? Maybe that. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Sorry about that. We're at the uh, bottom of a stairwell and they were coming at us. So we don't know where they were coming from. No? Okay, I think I, I think I have your answer. Mr. Green, may I just ask a follow up question? Madam Chairman? Yep, that's fine. I, I just, de Detective, I don't know whether you can hear me now, you're frozen again, but it, just, just to make it clear, you did not observe either of these individuals purchase any drinks. Is that correct? No, sir. Okay. So they, they, this could have been a pass off. This could have been somebody purchasing for them. It could have been any number of, um, of, of matters, if you will, where they got possession of this beverage. No, sir. He, he told us he purchased them. Well, he, he told you he, you didn't see him or anybody else see him purchase this or the young woman, right? No, but that's what he told us. So, I mean, I'm going to go with what the guy says to me. But you didn't, you didn't write him up for that? No, no. no. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? No, thank you. Okay. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number three, the Circle Bar and Grill doing business as the Circle, located at 356 Chestnut Hill Ave in Brighton. Date of the incident, October 7th, 2021. Assault and battery on a patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, Mr. Green, Stephen Miller, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. Um, also with me, uh, you can see on the video at the circle, uh, George Cariotis, who's uh, manager of record and one of the owners, and also uh, doorman who was involved in this incident, Victor Arias. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, good morning, Sergeant Kervin, KERV is in Victor IN. I am on the uh, last half overnight shift in area D14, which covers Alston Brighton. Thank you. And are there any other individuals present uh, who wish to testify on this matter? Okay. Could all parties please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Sergeant Kervin, please proceed with the police report. 
Okay, I'm gonna read the police report. Um, this is not my police report. This was the patrol officer at the time. About 23:30 hours on 10-7, 2021, officers Kurt and Estepi in the, the 202, along with myself, responded to 356 Chestnut Hill Lab, which is a Circle Pizza restaurant to, for investigate premise. On arrival, officers spoke with the owner, George Carotis. Uh, if I spelled his name wrong, I apologize. I said his name wrong. He stated that one of his patrons was unruly and she's been asked to leave. He stated that there's a capacity downstairs and they were at their limit. He stated that the victim's friends were downstairs and she wanted to join them. Uh, he stated that his staff refused her request and she started causing a disturbance and stated, in quotes, my father's a judge and he'll shut this place down. Now let me downstairs. After a few minutes of this, they stated to her that she had to leave the premise and walked her out. He also stated that once outside, she would not leave the front of the restaurant and stating it's a free country and I can stand on the sidewalk. He also stated that they have cameras inside and everything is recorded, but they don't have volume. Uh, I spoke to the victim and asked to her and her witness. She said that she tried to go downstairs. After numerous attempts, she was asked to leave the premise. She stated that Mr. Carota physically grabbed her by the arm and escorted her outside. Uh, both the uh, uh, victim and witness both pointed out Mr. Carotis to myself as the one who grabbed her by the arm. Um, I can, that's where I conducted a code 35, um, violation 060627. Uh, Mr. Carotis was advised to hold our recordings uh, uh, for this hearing. Um, let me just say the 911 caller, that's the end of the report. The 911 caller was in Florida and it stated his daughter is calling him saying that she's in Circle Pizza and they have locked her and her friends in the basement. There's a large group and they won't let them out of the basement. Paula gave the victim's name and said her friends are still trapped inside but she was able to leave outside. Um, when we got there, we confirmed that there was no kidnapping. Her friends weren't locked downstairs. Uh, she wasn't locked downstairs. Uh, I also add that the owner um, and the staff that were cooperative with the police um, with this, they handed me his ID or that, the license premise. So um, I don't have issues with the staff right this time. I don't know if detectives took charges out or any of that, I that I don't know. Thank you, Sergeant. Attorney Miller, uh, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, just a couple of quick questions for the, uh, the Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant, as you stated, the staff was was uh, um, cooperative, um, right. and also there was a bogus call uh, from Florida concerning a kidnapping. Correct. correct? I, don't, I don't know if you want to say bogus because he was in Florida, so I don't know if he really thought that his daughter was kidnapped or not. But when we got there, it, there was clearly no kidnapping. And and this um, Julia Singal. Um, her address is Coconut Creek, Florida. It is in Florida. I believe she's a student at Boston College. And she stated her father was a judge and was going to shut the place down because they wouldn't let her go downstairs to meet her friends. Correct. And we, yep, and her father, we did look, her father is a judge somewhere. <laughs> um, did you observe any um, marks or, or bruises or whatever on Miss Singal? Nope. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, with me uh, is uh, George Cariotis uh, and also the doorman that was involved. You can see them on video for the circle. Um, the uh, Mr. Uh, Harris, could you just identify yourself for the board? Good morning. Could you give the board your name, name, please? I'm sorry. Could, could, uh, Victor, could you please give the board your name? Uh, my name is Victor Arias. And, and you were working on the evening of the incident the police sergeant just read the report on? Yes, sir. And, and on that night, um, you have a, a set capacity for the upstairs and the downstairs, is that correct? That's correct. And, and so you're controlling, um, and there was another doorman with you, that, you, that between the two of you, you were controlling 
to make sure that the upstairs and the downstairs do not exceed capacity. Is that correct? Yes. And this particular um, Julia Singel um, wanted to go downstairs and you told us she had to wait until there was appropriate capacity. Is that correct? That's right. And she kept- Yes, sir. And she kept uh, giving you a hard time saying she didn't care, she wanted to go downstairs now? Yes, sir. And at that point, you heard what was in the report. She said that uh, her father is a judge and let her go downstairs or they're gonna, her father's gonna shut the place down. That's correct, sir. And so she kept, she kept uh, 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 causing a, a disturbance at that point. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And so you asked her to leave, um, correct? Yes, sir. And you escorted her from the premises? Uh, what's the question again? You, you escorted her from the premises. Is that correct? I was here. Okay, I think you're gonna. So you did escort her from the premises, correct? Yes. Did you ever put your hands on her? No. Nope. Was Mr. Cariotis there um, at any time when you escorted her from the premises? No, sir. Did you see Mr. Cariotis put his hands on her? No, sir. Um, I don't think I have anything further at that point. Her or her, uh, she refused to leave the out. I'm sorry. Uh, she stayed outside and refused to leave the area. Yes. Um, and then uh, when the police came, Mr. Cariotis and yourself spoke with the police. What's the question again? Uh, you and Mr. Cariota spoke with the police about this incident when the police arrived. Um, since since this incident, has this young woman attempted to come back to the circle? Yes, sir. And have you denied her admittance to the to the uh, premises? That's the question. Have you denied her? She has uh, attempted to come back to the circle on other occasions since this incident and have you denied her admittance to the premises? Yes, sir. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Uh, the board may have some questions of uh, Mr. Cariotis or, or Ms. Arias. Thank you, Attorney Miller. Chairman Joyce? I have no questions. Commissioner Carroner or Saxon? Yeah, none for me, thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number four, Game on Fenway LLC, doing business as Game on Sports Cafe, located at 72 to 82 Lansdowne Street. Date of the alleged incident, October 10th, 2021. Underaged person served in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34, 34A, 41, and 6464A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning again, Mr. Green, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. With me this morning, Anthony Chuga, who is uh, management staff for the licensee. Good morning. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sergeant Joseph Narduzzo, Area D4. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify today? Thank you. Could you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, Sergeant Narduzzo. Please uh, proceed with the police report. Okay, this report is uh, not my report. I'll read it from the incident. At about 12.30 a.m. on Sunday, October 10th, 2021, officers received a 911 radio call for two males trespassing in Fenway Park. Upon arrival, um, we met with uh, Fenway security, as the two males were still roaming around the park, they managed to comply with the officers at gate uh, A, I believe it was, or D. Um, officers identified, ID'd the two suspects. One 
Lionel Bean with the date of birth of 6-16-2000, which puts him at 21 years old. And a Michael Bernard, date of birth 5-10-2001, would put him at a date of birth of 20. When questioned as to how they entered the park, they stated that they were at, at game on and went through a set of doors that led into the park. Um, Michael Bernard provided an identification of his brother, Matthew Bernard, and he said that's how he was able to get into the game on. Um, we then issued them a trespass from Fenway Park and I went to game on to conduct a code 35 on the premise. I met with, I'm not sure the, the manager on, uh, in charge, very cooperative with us, um, provided us with the all permits that they had posted, um, as well as showed us how the patrons were able to enter Fenway Park from their bar. Uh, if you go into the basement of Game On, there's a large area dance floor and there's a set of double doors that lead directly into the visitor's clubhouse. Um, I cited them for um, serving uh, underage. Okay. Thank you, Sergeant. Attorney Quilty. Would you like to address that? Thank you, uh, Mr. Green, if I may. Sergeant, um, the staff did cooperate with you? Completely, yes. And do you re Mr. Chuga is with us here this morning um, as management. Did you um, inquire of him if he was able to make any observations of these people on their camera system? I did not. Um, the allegation here is that these two individuals were actually inside Fenway Park, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And it was according to the inspection notice, the call to the police was made, it just says by Fenway Park? Fenway Park security, yes. Okay. Um, and so was it subsequently that you went over to Game On? After we uh, interviewed the two subjects in Fenway Park. We, yes, I went to game on based on their um, statements that they got into the park through game on and that one of them was 20 years old. Okay. Um, so the licensee is charged with serving an underage person. It doesn't appear that you made any observations of anyone serving anyone, is that correct? No, yes, you're, you're correct. Um, and if I may just, um, no, that's fine. Let me, I'm fine, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. Appreciate it. If I may, Madam Chair, may I inquire of Mr. Chuga? Uh, thank you, sir. Would you, you've been sworn to state your name and your uh, position for the record. My name is Anthony Chuga and I'm a manager for Game On. Okay. And are you familiar with this incident? Yeah, I am. I was there that night. Um, I was the one who directed the uh, officers over to all of our licenses that are posted. Okay. And did you um, make observation of, of your security uh, system as to whether or not you could find these individuals? I, I looked through our security system, but they there was nothing that, that pinpointed them. Okay. And do you have any um, idea whether or not these people were in your establishment? I no, I didn't. I couldn't tell you that I did. Okay. And then it would follow that you, of course, have no knowledge of anyone serving these individuals. Correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. This board may have some questions for you. If I may, Madam Chair, just so there's an explanation here, there's, uh, when, when the establishment was first licensed uh, many years ago, there is a, uh, an access to a batting cage, which is straddles between the Fenway property line and this property line. And so the only purpose for that doorway system was for access, people could watch batting practice or so. I don't know whether it's even done anymore, but we have, other than that, we have no knowledge of these people being in the place or being served. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Colty. Chairman Joyce, any questions? I don't have any questions. I don't either. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon. Thank you. I do not. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Calling item number five, D Street Music LLC, doing business as D's Keys Dueling Pianos, located at 391 D Street. Date of the incident, October 16th, 2021. Patron on employee assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, Matthew Nichols, managing partner. And this is Robert Morris, also managing partner and general manager. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Should be an Officer Grant present. So I'm on the list here. Well, we're uh, going to see. Please be uh, Lieutenant Detective Troy can uh, read the report. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with uh, direct knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify on this matter? Okay, could you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I don't. Thank you. Lieutenant Detective Troy, could you please proceed with the police report? Uh, reading from a report authored by uh, police officer Ryan Grant <coughs> on at about 10.15 on October 16, 2021, Officer Brian and Smith uh, responded to a radio call for an assault and battery in progress at 391 D Street, South Boston. On arrival, officers noticed Noelle uh, Zeppa laying on the ground with blood by, by her side, holding her face, talking to her husband, James Zeppa. Uh, officers observed blood uh, coming from uh, Mr. Zeppa's mouth, and, or, I'm sorry, Ms. Zeppa's mouth, and she was covering it with a rag. Officers asked Zappa what happened, and she replied that her and her husband were kicked out of the establishment known as D's Keys. Zappa stated they were ref refusing to leave, and that one of the bouncers, Jean Jackson, tried to escort her and her husband from the premises. Uh, Ms. Zappa stated that Jackson tried to remove her husband, and that's when she turned around and punched Jackson, the bouncer, in the face on the uh, way out the door. Ms. Zappa stated when she walked out of the door, uh, Jack, the Mr. Jackson punched her in the face, causing her to fall to the ground. A witness on the scene, Sarah Salerno, stated to officers that she watched Zappa's husband being escorted from the premises when Noel Zappa smacked Jackson. At this time, uh, Mr. Jackson responded by punching Zappa in the face, causing her to fall to the ground. Uh, an ambulance responded to the scene and transported uh, Ms. Zappa and her husband to Tufts Medical Center to seek medical treatment. Mr. Jackson denied, uh, declined any medical attention. Uh, and then there's a supplementary report that states that uh, Detective Moriarty, and Detective Swain, uh, went to, to uh, um, 391 D Street, D's Keys for Code 35 on the same date um, and uh, issued a um, issued a license premise violation signed for by Robert Morris for uh, employee and patron assault. It's, it also states that the manager and staff were cooperative and polite. Um, and in the investigative notes, the investigation is active. It's assigned to de uh, Detective Moriarty <laughs> and there's no investigative notes here and nothing further. Thank you, Lieutenant Detective Troy. And it looks like we've just been joined by the reporting officer, uh, Officer Grande. If you, we could just swear you in really quickly in case there are any questions for you. Absolutely. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And uh, we just had the police report read into the record. So I'll turn to uh, Mr. Nichols and Mr. Morse if you would like to address the alleged incident. Um, sure. Uh, so uh, basically that evening, um, uh, you know, as stated, we had the husband and wife in. Um, they decided to sit at a table that was marked reserved. Um, I was managing the floor at the time. I went up to them and politely asked them to um, move from the reserve table and showed them the reserve sign. Uh, they refused repeatedly. <laughs> um, the husband uh, stood up and got aggressive. Um, I got some of our door staff. To come over with me, I asked them again a number of times. It took place over two or three minutes to please get up from the table. They refused. 
I removed um, the gentleman's drink and I asked my door staff to escort them out. Um, the woman in question uh, came up to me, threw her drink on me and smashed her glass against the bar as her husband was being escorted out. Um, they were escorted outside the front doors and uh, we all came back in. And uh, as uh, David there turned around, the woman um, punched him in the eye from behind, kind of came around and uh, gave him a black eye. And uh, he uh, turned around and, uh, and just took a swing because he was, uh, I think he was just startled and afraid and, uh, and he hit her. So that's, uh, that's basically long and short of what happened. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Joyce, any questions? I actually don't have any questions. None for me. Neither do I, thank you. Okay, uh, then the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Now calling item number six, Fenway Johnny's LLC, doing business as Fenway Johnny's, located at 96 to 98 Brookline Ave. Date of the incident, October 17th, 2021. Assault and battery, employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A, and assault and battery, patron on employee in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Madam uh, Chairperson, uh, Commissioners Saxon and Curran, uh, and uh, Attorney Green. Uh, I am attorney Seamus O'Kelly uh, representing the licensee. I do have a witness, Levi Demora Guillermez, who should be present. I also have the licensee present. Um, he may or may not testify, John Karen. But if, if they could be sworn, please, Mr. Green. Sure, thank you. And is, uh, is this iPhone with the hand raised, is this one of the witnesses, do we think? Yeah, it's me, Levi. That, that is my witness. Thank you. Uh, if you, is there, can you be on camera, please, just so we can share you in? If you, thank you. Great. Well, can you too? And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Um, it was uh, Sergeant Ross. Is, uh, I don't see Sergeant Ross present or Officer Murray. So Lieutenant Detective Troy again. Thank you. And are there any additional individuals with personal knowledge of the incident who wish to testify on this matter? Okay. Could you all please raise your right hand so I can throw you in? Uh, just so I can see your hand on the iPhone. Thank you. Uh, all right. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, about that day? The... Oh, hang on. Sorry. Just one second. We will begin with the police report. Lieutenant Detective Troy, if you could please read the police report into the record. Certainly. It's a report uh, authored by uh, Officer Terrence Murray on October 17th um, and states at 12.50 p.m. Uh, on Sunday, October 17th, 2021, Officer Murray and Terigian in, uh, responded to a radio call for an assault and battery at 96 Brooklyn Ave, Boston. On arrival, officers located a victim, Mike Lehman, who stated that he was inside family Johnny's bar with his friends, but he got into a verbal altercation with bouncers about smoking inside. Mr. Lehman said that the bouncer punched him repeatedly in the face and threw him out of the bar. Mr. Lehman uh, did have a cut and was, which was bleeding on his lower lip. He, Mr. Lehman was assessed by Boston EMS uh, and refused transportation to the hospital. Uh, bouncers, the bouncer at family Johnny's identified as Mr. DeMora stated that Lehman and his friends were all smoking inside the bar. Mr. DeMora and other bouncers then stated that they told Lehman and his friends to stop smoking in the bar, which they refused. Mr. DeMora then stated they were escorted out the bar, outside the bar. And as they were escorted out, Mr. Lehman kicked the front door uh, to the bar and kicked Mr. Mora in the stomach. Uh, officers didn't uh, observe a foot imprint on Mr. DeMora's shirt. Mr. DeMora then stated Lehman and his friends were pushed out of the bar to the sidewalk. Mr. DeMora stated that one of Mr. Lehman's friends, an unknown female, ripped his earpiece out and broke it. Uh, the Sergeant Ross was responsible for the scene and issued a code 35. Uh, 
uh, that's the extent of the, the uh, um, police report. Thank you. Attorney O'Kelly, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yeah, thank you, Attorney Green. Um, firstly, I'd, I'd like to um, mention to the members of the board that I dropped off a thumb drive yesterday to um, Attorney Green. It contains two videos and which and I will address those videos after after we have dealt with the testimony here today. There are two videos, one taken from inside the bar that's about 30 minutes in duration and a cell phone video taken from outside the bar. Um, if I could briefly ask um, Lieutenant Det Detective Troy some questions. Still on. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Detective Troy, you, you, uh, you, um, you read the report of Officer Murray in this in this case, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, you have no um, you've no independent verification that uh, Mr. Mike Lehman, who's identified as the victim in the report, uh, he stated that the bouncer pushed punched him repeatedly in the face and threw him out of, and threw him out of the bar. You, you've no independent verification of that allegation. No, sir, correct? I don't. And uh, you also. Uh, noted that uh, Officer Murray wrote that Mr. DeMora, uh, the, uh, the bouncer who was, was about to testify here, stated that Lehman, the alleged victim in the case, kicked the front door to the bar and kicked uh, Levi, namely Mr. DeMora, in the stomach, and that Officer Murray did observe a footprint on Mr. DeMora's shirt, correct? That's correct. And further and finally, um, Mr. DeMora also stated that one of Lehman's friends, an, un an unknown female, ripped his earpiece out of his ear and broke it. Yes, sir. Right? I have no further questions of Lieutenant Detective Troy. Thank you. Would you like to question your witness? I would, and um, I, I would, um, uh, Madam Chairwoman and, and, and members of the board, af after the evidence, after the evidence has concluded here, I would like to make a, a brief statement uh, along the lines of a closing argument of the case. But I would like to call Levi Demora Guiarmes. I, I cannot. Is, I don't know if he's on the screen. Can't see him. Levi, are you here? Oh, he is here. He's on the top. He's on his iPhone. If he could unmute himself. Okay, I'm here. Thank, thank you, Levi. Could you please identify yourself to the members of the board this morning, please? Stating okay, your name. My, yeah, my name is Levi Gimarais. Um, I work at Fenway Jones. And what is your what is your position? What is your job at Fenway Jones? My job is uh, I'm the head the head security in there, and my job is is at the door checking this. Like I'm the guy who allows everyone comes in. Like if it's a fake ID or not, if it's too drunk or not, I control the door. All right, and and Fenway Johnny's is is a is a premises is a bar that has two floors. Isn't that correct? Yes, two floors. There's a down. There's the there's the floor on the street level. And then there's a downstairs bar, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and at the stairway heading to the downstairs bar, there's also an exit door. Isn't that correct? Yes. I mentioned the door. Yes. There's an so there and there are two doors on the street to get into Fenway Johnny's. Correct. Correct. So on on Sunday, October the seventeenth, twenty twenty one, you were working that morning at Fenway Johnny's. Correct. Correct. Okay, and you heard the uh, you heard the uh, uh, lieutenant detective Troy uh, read the police report of Officer Murray a, a few moments ago. Correct. Yes. Do you have a memory of that evening? Oh yes. Um, the situation started the at the stairways for downstairs. And the guy and the girl was creating problem because we we can't stuck the the stab in, in cause of fire or anything. We can't we can't stop in there. 
and the security that works in there asked him so many times to, to go down or to get out. And he did not attend and he started to say shit for, for that guy. And he put him outside and he got so... Let me stop you there. So is it your testimony that a guy and a girl were causing yeah. some problems at the top of the stairs? Yeah. Correct? Yes. And they, and they were asked to leave by security staff at Fenway Johnny's, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and the security did not touch any, any of them, just opened the door and asked them to leave and they left. And I was at the other door and I saw him kicking the, the, the door so many times. And I just got let close me, to him. Let me stop you there. Who did you see kicking the door so many times? Uh, the kid, the kid that is kid. involved, yes. Okay. Do you remember what this kid looked like? Uh, he's like, he looks skinny and white and, and blonde. Blonde hair? Yes, blonde hair. Okay. So you saw him kicking the door yes, a number many, of times. Yes. And what, happened, many, what happened next? I, I asked him to leave and he came and, and, and punched my, my stomach, uh, kicked my stomach. He kicked, and, he kicked you in the stomach? Yes. And I just pushed him back, like pushing him back on the face. And at the same time, his girlfriend, I don't know if is his girlfriend or not, she came to me, tried to slap my face. And when I moved back, she, she hit my, the earpiece from me. Okay. So when you say you pushed him, you pushed him yeah. after he kicked you, is that correct? After, yes, after he kicked, he kicked my stomach. Okay. And then, and then the police arrived, is that correct? Yes, the police arrived. And you told the police what happened about yeah, but the the police are, arrived the way later. He stayed at the sidewalk and say shit to us uh, for a long time. The same guy? The same guy. And the police came like 40 minutes after. He stayed in the sidewalk for like 40 minutes saying shit, like uh, talking a lot of shit for us. Okay. So he was he was outside the premises for another 40 minutes, right? For another 40 minutes. And, and then came the police and ambulance. The police and the ambulance arrived then? Yes. Okay. And this gentleman was not taken away in an ambulance, correct? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay, I, I have no further question of Mr. Demora. The members of the board may have some questions for you. Okay. Thank you, Attorney O'Kelly. Chairman Joyce, any questions? Thank you. I don't have any questions right now. Yeah, okay. I didn't know. thank you. None for the witness for me, thank you. And Madam Chairwoman and, and members of the board, as I stated earlier, I, I have submitted uh, two videotapes for your consideration in this matter. And uh, if I'll be very brief. In the first videotape, um, you will see the individual uh, who's identified as, as Mr. Lehman in the police report and, and a female companion of his standing at the top of the stairs heading to the downstairs bar um, they were uncooperative and they were asked to leave. It's, it's obvious from the video. What you will also see is the male, Mike Lehman, spitting in the face of one of the security staff. That, I submit, is an assault and battery under our law. And in the era of COVID, to spit into somebody's face is certainly egregious at best. You will then see Mr. Lehman very respectfully, I will submit, being escorted outside the, escorted outside by the by the staff member in Fenway Johnny's, you will then see him out on the street kicking the front door. And you will then see him kick Mr. or Levi, Mr. Demora on the street. That's what you'll see in that video. The second video is a cell phone video taken from a disinterested party on the other side of the street. It's about 30 seconds long, and you will see the same activity from a different angle. And you will hear people on that video going, oh my God, the girl, she's, you know, she's hitting them in the face. So you have two different views of this for your consideration. And, and that is all I have for the board today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions from the board at this time? I don't. And I know you did drop off the video. I'll, we'll make sure that we have an opportunity to review it. Thank you very much, uh, Chairwoman Joyce. 
Attorney O'Kelly? Yes. Um, the, the, your video, did you say it was about 30 minutes long? Yeah, about that. Okay, do, um, just for our, do you have any, is, is it all full of the action or, or are there timestamps you want to direct us to? Do you have, do you have yeah. any notes? Yeah, it's, it's about 30 minutes long. You, you really only need to see, when you get about seven minutes into it, you'll start, you'll start seeing the action when the, it's a blonde female is standing at the top of the stairs. And then that will continue for about another four minutes. That's, that's where the action takes place. Thank you. There is a player, um, uh, Commissioner Curran, that you will have to click on to play that video, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. And that's included on the thumb drive that I dropped off. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you board very much. Will, thank you. And the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Item number seven has been continued uh, at the request of the Licensees Council and will be heard on February 15th. Now calling item number eight, DA Crossing LLC, doing business as J.M. Curley, located at 21 to 27 Temple Place. Date of the incident, October 14th, 2021. Assault and battery, employee on employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Myself, Kevin Mabry, General Manager. My uh, business partner, Bob McPean, is also uh, here as well. Thank you. And who is present on behalf Morning. of the Boston Police Department? I can read this one. Detective Hernandez, thank you. Are there any other individuals with direct knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify today? Okay, can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Detective Hernandez, please proceed with the police report. Hey, good morning. I'll be reading uh, from a police report authored by uh, Jackson Genus. At, uh, at about 11.16 uh, p.m., on Thursday, 10-14, 2021, Officer Genus and the Alpha 422F, along with Alpha 432F, P.O. Griffin, responded to a radio call for a fight at 21 Temple Place, J.M. Curley, Boston. Upon arrival, Officer encountered the licensed supremacy unit on scene. Officer spoke with Scott Miles, the victim, manager of J.M. Curley Bar, who stated that he was assaulted by one of his employees. The victim stated that his employee identified as Manny Pena, suspect, was highly intoxicated and was making a lot of noise. The victim stated that he asked the suspect to leave the property. The victim stated that he got, um, the suspect got upset and started fighting with him. The victim stated the suspect fled the scene prior to the police arrival. The victor, David 23, Sergeant Detective Gallagher and the victor 815, Detective Hernandez issued license premise violation 060271. That's all in the report. Thank you, Detective. Mr. Mabry, Mr. Bina, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, if I may begin, um, Madam Chairman, members of the board, uh, thank you for having us. Uh, this was a fairly routine incident in the sense that we uh, followed protocol of how we handle incidents similar to this. Luckily, we don't have many incidents like this, but uh, certainly all protocols were followed. Um, Kevin Mabry, our general manager and manager of record, will certainly go through the details of what occurred that day. Um, our bar manager called uh, 911 to report the incident escalating, and um, uh, this employee was actually an ex-employee. And again, Mr. Mabry will will read the um, incident report that we internally fill out immediately when an incident like this happens. Kevin, if you would. Yes, absolutely, Madam Chairman, members of the board, thanks for having us today. I'm going to read from the incident report 101421, written by Scott Miles himself, the victim in this case. Um, it goes as follows. Ex-employee Manny Pena shows up intoxicated and sits on the patio outside, uh, with outside alcohol. I go out to tell him this is not allowed. He becomes agitated and walks into the restaurant. At this point, I follow him and tell him again he's not allowed to be in here. Um, he starts to become very confrontational, so I ask him to leave and escort him outside while he's yelling in front of guests and causing a disturbance. He follows me outside verbally, then physically assaulting me. He tackles me to the ground for a moment and then walked away, at which point we called the police officers. Great. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Joyce, any questions? I just have a comment. Um, thank you for calling the police for such an incident. These are the things that we were trying, we're trying to emphasize and encourage all licensees to do. 
when there is an employee employee escalated incident in this case the former employee but this is exactly what we want you guys to do we will not penalize you for calling the police or something like that like this. i appreciate that thank you thank you madam chairman thank you any questions from commissioner saxon or commissioner curran Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. All. you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number nine, Ipswich Entertainment Inc. doing business as Loretta's last call located at one Lansdowne Street. Date of the incident, October 18th, 2021. Overcrowding, house count 135, mechanical count 172. Capacity under setup number two, 134, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J, 1.06A, and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Attorney Green and members of the board, Madam Chair. Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. With me is Miles Kopka, who's the general manager of uh, Loretta's Last Call. I hope he's with us. Miles? There he is. I see Thank him. you. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am, sir. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with direct knowledge of the incident who wish to testify today? <clears throat> Great. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Detective Fernandez, please proceed with the police report. Again, good morning. I'll be reading from a police report with uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher wrote, on 10 18 2021 at about 6 32 p.m sorry detective william gallagher and detective eddie hernandez signed to the license permission to conduct a license permit inspection of loretta's last call at one lansdowne street the, the inspection took place during the red sox astros american league championship game as detectives walked through the premise they observed the tables to be <clears throat> the tables to be all occupied with patrons standing at the bar detective hernandez conducted a mechanical count of the premise, which resulted in 172 patrons being found. The house count detectives were given by the doorman was 135 patrons. The premises license lists two different types of setups, which also have different capacities. The premise was currently set up as a restaurant with tables and chairs on the main floor. The listed, the listed capacity under setup number two was 134. Detectives brought this brought the findings to the attention of the manager, Miles Copa, uh, who stated that he would bring the premise into compliance. As, as a result in what was observed, signed Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 005302 to Loretta's last call for overcrowding premise, house count 135, mechanical count 172, capacity set under set up two was 134. Mr. Malcolm, aside for an accepted the notice, that is all. Thank you, Detective Attorney Quilty. Thank you, um, Mr. Green. Detective Hernandez, <coughs> your inspection notice indicates the management cooperated with you. Holy sir. And was it was Mr. Kopka who was with us this morning? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you. I just wanted to question the, the, this is uh, a somewhat unusual circumstance with two different sets of capacity is that correct yes very very we didn't we, we didn't even notice it till after we started actually looking at it there's actually <laughs> two different setups right 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 okay <laughs> thank you sir i have no further questions may well, i inquire of mr kopka <laughs> thank you mr kopka you've been sworn to state your name and your position at the licensee for the record Miles kopka, general manager of loretta's last call okay and were you present on the night in question and are you the person who uh, interfaced with Detective Hernandez? I was. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was. Okay. And can can you tell the can you tell the uh, the board what you had done with regard to the uh, floor plan on the night in question? Yep. I uh, so before the day even started, we took out more than half of the bar stools, as well as um, three to four of the tables that were in the establishment um, before the before the pregame rush. And you, you, the uh, this being a, uh, a a championship game, you expected a big crowd, I presume. I didn't hear you. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, so in your opinion, was the premise uh, operating not as a restaurant on the night in question and therefore entitled to the larger capacity? Is that what you had done? 
Yes. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> could you explain, just explain what you do in the circumstance when you're trying to, uh, you know, remove, if you will, the restaurant functions of the room so that you get the greater capacity? Sure. Um, the tables usually get sat first. And as um, we get busier and busier, furniture continuously comes out throughout the day so that we can hit a larger capacity. And is that what you had done or intended to do on the night in question? Yes. And did you explain that to the detectives? Yes. Okay. And is it your testimony today that you were appropriately within capacity given the changes that you had made? Yes. And you did cooperate with the officers? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. The, the board may have some questions for you. Sure. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Any questions? So just to be just to uh, be clear, as a restaurant, the capacity is allowed to be one. Um, I'm sorry. I, I just closed my screen. Can you repeat that again with two different setups? Mr. Kopka? Or yes. You must, whichever. Go ahead. Um, uh, there's two setup on our licenses. So setup two as a restaurant is a 134 count for yeah. occupancy. Without any furniture in, it's 267. Okay. So we took a nightclub with live, like a live music venue. Okay. All right, I don't have any other questions. Neither do I, thank you. Uh, the, the setup, they're, they're pretty specific, right? It's 24 persons at tables, right? I didn't hear that question, Commissioner Carr. Sorry, um, the, the setup is, uh, the larger capacity setup has only 24 persons at tables, right? Mr. Kopka, can you answer that question? I cannot. I don't have the, the setups in front of me, so I don't want to give a, a wrong information. Oh. Um, would it be fair to say that the two setups, as they're distinct from each other, are very specific, though, correct? Yes. There's not like a sliding scale. You can't take out a couple of tables and get X amount more, then take out a couple more tables and get X amount more, right? It, there's no, there's only those two setups, correct. And was this, the restaurant in compliance completely with the description of, this, of the setup with the larger capacity? Uh, we had a full dining room seated and we were gonna be continuously taking out tables as, as patrons got up. But that's not how the setups are worked out, correct? Uh, yeah, the, there's those two setups. Okay, and what I'm getting from you is that they were somewhere in between the two setups. That, that's how I'm hearing it from you, is, is that correct? Correct, because we had less furniture in than a normal setup. And one last question. Can you um, account for the discrepancy between the count that was given to the inspectors and the count that was actually in the restaurant? Uh, the count that my door guys had had 135. That's all I have. Okay, any further questions from the board? Okay, thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10 has also been continued due to a request from Licensees Council. It will be heard on February 1st. And those are all of the matters before the board today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.